Before my talk, I want to ask a question. Is our water safe? Not really, is probably your answer. Actually, we are staying in a planet with water and the environment being heavily polluted. Pollutants are found in the surface water, groundwater, soil, sediments, and biota. Globally, at least 1.8 billion of people are still using drink water source, contaminated even with feces. Pollution from toxic chemicals are threatening life on this planet. For pollutants removal and treatment, it can be traced back to 2,000 years ago as represented by the buried Pompeii city in Italy. The urine and feces generated by people are collected in a public toilet and treated before discharging to the environment. Similar concept still applies to modern cities like the Seven Star Hotel in Dubai. Although treatment with water has greatly improved with technology development, we still have a long way to go. We need to move away from just thinking about removing simple organic compounds and start thinking about new technologies with less energy input, lower cost, and taking care of the emerging contaminants. They are widely distributed in the subsurface environment, as shown in the coastal region of the United States and many other populated cities. In addition, about one third of industry's water and more than 90% of household sewage are discharged without being treated. One example for the persistent organic pollutants is a flame retardant called PBDEs. They are used widely in furniture and electronic products. Due to their high hydrophobicity, they are accumulated in the air, soil, sediment, fresh water, deep sea, fish, marine mammals, polar bears, bird eggs, breast milk, or human tissue. The concentration of PBDE in breast milk and wildlife has increased exponentially in the last 30 to 40 years. Some of them can change the hormone balance of many species, having dramatic effects on the population structures. People have spent a great effort looking for microbes to detoxify them. Luckily, in my laboratory, a group of specialized bacteria are identified to detoxify these pollutants by altering their chemistry. Advanced biological tools have been employed to understand the enzymes doing the work. Also among these mechanisms, we found that uh, cartridge GY2 has excellent capability to remove all the bromines from pentatetra BDE, as shown on the left-hand side, to the final product, diphenyl ether, as shown on the right-hand side, within two weeks of time. Pentatetra BDE are not only toxic, they can also change the hormone balance of people. One great challenge in bioremediation is the slow growth of mechanisms when fed with these toxic pollutants. We found that our specialized bacteria can grow on one pollutant to high cell number, then apply them to another more toxic pollutants. In this way, the degradation time can be shortened from 120 days to seven days. In terms of nutrient removal from wastewater, we developed a novel animals process. The key point of it is that bacteria can convert ammonia directly to natural gas with all the requirement of oxygen at external organic carbon source. Therefore, it is an energy at cost saving process. The functional genes of all species bacteria are revealed by next generation sequencing technology. The exciting part of it is that microbial activity can be optimized and the functional genes can be used as a biomarker to track the bioremediation process in situ. With our specialized bacteria and our monitoring tools available, we can grow our bacteria in large quantities, then apply them to the visible treatment plant and also to the polluted sites for them to carry out the bioremediation work. Overall, we are facing a great challenge in cleaning up our polluted water and the environment. The good news is that a specialized group of bacteria has been identified to fight against certain persistent organic pollutants. Always keeping in mind that source reduction is still a critical step in protecting our water and the environment. At the end, we need to think about what is the capacity of mechanisms in cleaning up our polluted water and the environment. What are the advantages of biological process over physical chemical process? How to make the bioremediation process a sustainable process in terms of energy at cost saving? Thank you.